Oh, wrong button. There we go. All right, today I will be presenting data from a project that I worked on this summer during an internship at the NIH. Low socioeconomic status, also referred to as SES, has been linked to a variety of poor lifestyle behaviors and increased risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. Recent research suggests that SES may be related to various metrics of brain health. However, these studies have not investigated potential lifestyle factors that may be contributing to these observed relationships. Now, this is an important consideration as it's been estimated that up to half of all of the Alzheimer's cases worldwide are potentially attributed to modifiable lifestyle factors, which may in part explain the observed SES disparities. Therefore, the objectives of this study were to investigate whether SES is related to brain volume in a community-based middle-aged population, and if so, determine whether this relationship is mediated by modifiable lifestyle factors that are known to associate with risk of Alzheimer's disease. <clears throat> Investigating modifiable factors in midlife is of particular relevance as this is a period of aging where lifestyle factors can be altered to decrease one's risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Our participants came from the Coronary Artery Risk Development in Young Adult Study, also known as CARDIA. CARDIA is a longitudinal multi-site cohort that began back in 1985 with centers in Birmingham, Oakland, Minneapolis, and Chicago. Uh, if you look at the figure in the bottom left, you can see that Cardia is quite a diverse sample with respect to gender, race, and education. For this project, we included 645 Cardia participants that also partook in the Cardia Brain MRI sub-study. We defined SES as a combined income and education score. Both household income and years of education were broken into three levels and summed together to create an SES score, which ranged from two, which would be low SES, to six, which would be high. An example of an individual scoring a two would be having a household income less than $50,000 a year and less than or equal to 12 years of formal education. Whereas someone with a score of six would have a household income greater than $100,000 and uh, greater than or equal to 17 years of formal education. We use the spatial pattern of atrophy for recognition of brain aging index as our measure of brain volume. SPARE-BA Spare is a composite measure of five brain regions that have shown to be vulnerable to early age-related atrophy. And our risk factors of interest were physical activity, depression, smoking, hypertension, obesity, diabetes, cognitive activity, diet, and alcohol consumption. These factors were chosen based on the evidence for their association with future risk of Alzheimer's disease. Examining our first aim, which was the relationship between SES and brain volume, we used multiple linear regression while adjusting for age, race, and sex. If our hypothesis was supported, we then sought to determine whether this relationship is mediated by lifestyle risk factors. We use Pearson correlations to identify potential mediators and then uh, proceeded with Sobel mediation analyses. We had 645 individuals in uh, the study. Mean age was 55, approximately half were women, 40% were black. We observed a normal distribution with respect to SES scores with the majority of individuals falling in the middle of the scale and about 12% on both the low and high end. Brain volume was negatively associated with age and positively associated with cognition. 
Now I present these data to demonstrate the potential utility of the spare BA index. Getting into our uh, primary aim, we found that SCS was significantly associated with brain volume while accounting for the variance explained by age, sex, and race. This is being depicted, depicted here with the figure on the right where individuals of high SCS displayed greater brain volume than those of moderate and low SCS standing. Because our primary hypothesis was supported, we were able to proceed with investigating potential mediators. Here we have the correlation matrix of our nine potential lifestyle factors um, in the top row, and then SCS and brain volume on our column here to the left. Through analyzing this table, we identified two potential mediators due to their significant relationship with both our predictor, which was SCS, and our outcome, which was brain volume. Those were depressive symptoms and smoking. Greater depressive, so, greater depressive symptoms were associated with lower SES and lower brain volume. Similarly, greater smoking was associated with lower brain volume and lower SES as well. When we um, plugged these potential mediators into our uh, models, we determined that smoking was significantly mediating the relationship between SES and brain volume. However, depressive symptoms were not. With respect to brain volume, smoking accounted for a significant amount of variance that was being previously attributed to SES, which also can be seen by the table on the right showing the mediating effect of smoking on SES and brain volume. In conclusion, targeting SES disparities may improve brain health and decrease vulnerability for Alzheimer's disease. Notably, within our sample, smoking partially explained the adverse effects of low SES on brain volume, um, which would suggest that targeting lifestyle factors such as smoking may be a promising means to mitigate some of the SES disparities on brain health. Certainly, further research is needed to um, further these results and get more definitive findings. However, we are very fortunate here at the University of Wisconsin to have one of the premier SES scientists, Dr. Amy Kind. It was actually Dr. Kind's work that initially got me interested in this topic and ultimately led to this project this summer. In addition to Dr. Kind, I'd like to acknowledge the lab I was in this summer, PIs of the Cardia study, funding sources, and my mentors, Dane Cook and Ozioma Okonkwo, for providing great references for this program, and of course, with being okay with me taking off for an entire summer. <laughs> uh, with that, I'm not sure if we have time for questions. Otherwise, I have a poster and be happy to field any questions you guys may have. <laughs>